So after the most recent performance by Hendrick Harburg against Northern Illinois and the struggles that Jeff Sims had against Colorado and Minnesota, there's a lot of speculation out there, a lot of clamoring for a permanent quarterback change to happen. And I'm here to tell you that I don't think that is the right decision. I think the best thing for Nebraska and this team is to keep going with Jeff Sims as the quarterback. And I know the narrative is out there that he didn't play well and his turnovers have cost Nebraska two games. And I'm not here to disagree with you. I'm not saying that his turnovers, his three interceptions against Minnesota, lost that game because I think they did. And I know his his fumbled snaps and interception against Colorado turned the tide to allow Colorado to to eventually win that game. I'm not I'm not disagreeing with that. What I'm here to say is is Jeff Sims has been playing much better than what people are giving him credit for. And I think a big part of that is what took place during that Colorado game with Gus Johnson. I thought it was completely irresponsible. I thought it was lunacy that during that second at the end of the second half, quarter against Colorado, you had Gus Johnson in his is full of emotion talk saying, just pleading with Nebraska to bench Jeff Sims and that he's costing them the game. Yes, he had those fumble snaps. Yes, he threw that interception. But if you take a look at that Colorado game more in depth, Sims actually played pretty well. And so that's what I want to do here is I'm going to go ahead and look at the game tape, break it down, and show you why not only is Jeff Sims better than you think he is, He's definitely the quarterback that Nebraska needs to ride with the rest of this 2023 season. Now, when we look at Jeff Sims and how he did against Colorado, a majority of his throws um, were short, quick throws. It was designed to get the ball out quick. Nebraska wanted to run the ball. They wanted to control the clock. And so most of his throws we're just getting the ball out quick to the receivers. We see here with the uh, hook, quick hook out to um, Kemp. We see a crossing route to Kemp. Just get the ball out fast, get it in space, and just keep moving forward. And in this process, Sims is able to do that. He's able to make these quick little throws and just keep the, uh, the chains moving. And he threw it a high percentage. I mean, if you look at it, he completed 9 of 15 throws. And if you do an adjusted completion percentage, and that means you take away his his times he burned the ball or, you know, um, drops, because there was a couple drops in this game, he ended up completing, you know, 84% of his passes. And we see here, here's his only true two incompletions. Hey, one of them, this one you're seeing right here, is towards the end of the half. He tried to just get rid of it. To me, I thought that was maybe trying to burn it. Tough to say. And then this one right here, another one. Once again, is he just trying to get rid of the ball to avoid a sack? You know, it's tough to say there was a receiver right there. But like I said, these are his two only true incompletions. Others that were either dropped or intercepted. You know, so I mentioned it and just showed you his two only incompletions. <clears throat> I showed you all the quick, easy hitters that he had. Here are the two drops. We look at this. Second seven. This play was a throw to Fedoni right here. Tough throw. It was low. But as you can see right there on the clip, Fedoni should have had that catch. That would have been a first down. I believe Nebraska, What the next play was the crosser to Kemp that he was able to get the first down. In this case, you're still moving the clock or still moving the ball and potentially, you know, once again, maybe getting some points out of it. The other drop is later on in the game. This is a crucial third down. And what happens is Sims actually makes a really good throw, steps up in the pocket. I mean, this ball to Bullock was maybe a little outside of his frame. He had to extend for it, leave his feet. But he was still in a position to make this catch. Okay? This is a crucial third down. Nebraska's still in the game. And Sims is out there 
throwing the ball right to where his receiver needs it in the hands, and he drops it. Now let's go ahead and let's take a look at what Sims did good. And I think there are four plays, and there's a couple more as well. But these four plays really illustrate, like I said, that I think Jeff Sims is playing better than we're giving him credit for and should still be this quarterback. Here, this is the first completion of the game. A okay, first drive. Now, it's this pass right here to Bo Richter over the middle for the first down. But if you look at the end zone view, this isn't his first read. His first read is over here to the right. He's looking and seeing these guys are not open. And he's then turning and going through his progressions to see Bo Richter coming across the middle and throws that ball nicely into the window for the completion. Hey, very next uh, next play. Well, once again, looking to his left. Hey, not liking what he's seeing. He's seeing the defender sitting down. What does he do? Does he force it? Does he try to force it and potentially get a turnover? No, he sees that he's got Ramir Johnson over here. Check it down. We'll see if he can get some yards after the catch. Hey, you get it from the end zone view here. Once again, looking to that left. Not liking what he's seeing. It's this defender. He sees the safety right there. This defender sitting down. Him, you know, not really getting a ton of separation. Okay, quickly turn back. Go this way. What I like about this play is we're going to see this linebacker coming, and Colorado's going to get instant pressure. Sims realizes that, is able to get outside and get away from it, and still deliver a nice ball to the sideline for a completion. Just his ability to, to sense that pressure, get outside, and still throw the ball on a laser to Kemp for the catch. All right, and then finally, the last one I want to showcase is just his ability to, to – and it's kind of been the theme for these. He's reading the field. He's looking for defenders or looking, looking for checkdowns. You know, his look is right. Nothing's there. Nothing's up the middle. Hey, let me move up in the pocket find my tight end as my dump off who ends up getting the first down and it's plays like these four completions that are showing once again he's playing better than we think yes he cannot turn off the turn the ball over he cannot throw interceptions he cannot drop snaps but if he can kind of contain that a little bit big if he's still playing at a pace that can win the games for nebraska All right, and finally, one thing I want to point out was where was the run game for Jeff Sims? You know, we we looking at this this Colorado. You know, he ran the ball twelve times against Minnesota, and that was a big part of the offense against Colorado. These are his three designed run plays. That's arguably his best strength is running the ball, and Nebraska didn't do that. And we saw against Northern Illinois with Hendrick Harburg. They ran the ball a ton. I think Harburg had 25 carries. Sims had 19 against Minnesota. Why did they not run the ball more against Colorado with Sims? I get that they were having some success with the running backs, but utilize his, his ability. I mean, we see with these three plays, he got good yardage. Why did they stop this? Why did they not keep running him the ball more? In these situations, you know, these quarterback draws, I kept waiting for one of them to happen on maybe third and, and longer, but we didn't see it. They have to run the quarterback. This, the, the receivers aren't good enough. They have to run the quarterback. Now, as I said, I honestly feel that Jeff Sims gives this ch this team the best chance to become bowl eligible. I mean, this you you got to look at the, their remaining schedule. There's not a lot of other than Michigan. I you know I can make an argument that every game is winnable. Now every game is also losable. Don't get me wrong as either, but Illinois is not as good as they were. Wisconsin's having some struggles. Iowa is going to continue to be Iowa. You know, they got Northwestern. They got uh, Purdue. There's games that can be won. Maryland is not as good as people were giving them credit for this offseason. And I know Harburg played well, but I think a lot of people just saw the points that were put up. He didn't turn over, and we're going a little overboard. 
Harburg struggled in that first half. I mean, they scored the touchdown, and then they struggled for a while before they finally broke it open late. And, yes, he didn't turn over the ball. But, like I said, Sims, there's times that I was watching that game, especially in that first half against Northern Illinois, that I saw, Mike, Sims would have made that play. Sims, and, and, I, and this is not a shot at Hendrick Harburg. He's a young, inexperienced quarterback that I was glad that he got a chance to go out and start and, and play a game to see what we had in him. And I think he's good enough to be the backup to Sims. And I think you got to have a short leash on Jeff Sims. you got to go with him and say, hey, you got to take care of the ball. I mean, those drop snaps were fluky, I think. I mean, how often does that happen? It's not, you know, Sims has had turnover issues at his time at Georgia Tech. They weren't dropping snaps. So I'm kind of willing to give that a benefit of the doubt and say, hey, we just got to control these turnovers, these, these, inco- these interceptions. And so I think you still, once Sims is healthy, you go out and you lean on him. Also, the thing we got to look at is where, it, you know, Sims played against on the road at Minnesota – opening week against a t- one of the better teams in the West and at a Col- Colorado against a team that's right now going to be top 15 in the nation. Harburg played at home against a Mac school that's not very good. So when we look at this, Jeff Sims, I showed you the tape, is better than people are giving him credit for. And we need to, you know... Still not just cast him off the to the side because he's had those turnovers. We lost those two games, and Harbor came in and beat a crappy Mac team. So that's going to go ahead and do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. The best way to get this is to subscribe, so make sure you hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell for all your notifications. While you're at it, make sure you follow me on social media, draft underscore Brian. Thanks for watching. Until next time.